Today's episode is brought to you by Canby Foursquare Church. Since 1978, a place to grow, connect, and serve. In-person services are back with some restrictions to help ensure everyone stays safe and healthy. For the latest, visit their website at canbyfoursquare.com. Welcome to Now Hear This Can Be, your source for news. The threat of a possible teacher strike was avoided this week. There's a new irresistibly cute creature winning over fans, and its name is Scootaloo. Sports? It's like Lucy in the football. You want to kick a field goal, but they take it away from you. We had to learn how to win. Mm -hmm. Goal can't be in the last second of the game! And interesting conversations. Because I'm one of the strongest girls ever, and I know that for a fact. I just really enjoy writing gossip as if I was a bear. <laughs> With an old maid daughter that make the best moonshine in the coast. <laughs> and if you would hit me in the face, I think I would have died. I really do. It, it, it... I guarantee you would have died, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hey friends and welcome to Now Hear This Can Be Podcast. Thank you for listening. I'm James Walton and this is what's happening this week in our community. A recall effort to remove two of Canby city councilors whose term began in January has failed after petitioners did not submit the required number of signatures to the city's recorder's office before the Monday deadline. Conservatives had targeted progressive councilor Sarah Spoon who won her second term in the November election, and Chris Bangs, who is in his first, over claims of inappropriate and anti-religious comments made months before the recalls were filed. The petitions were filed the same week a conservative counselor, Jordan Tibbles, announced he was resigning and moving out of the state, shifting the balance of power on the council in favor of the progressive bloc for the first time in years. The recalls had been initiated by Stephanie Boyce, owner of the Vitamin Plaza in downtown Canby, and herself an unsuccessful candidate for the Canby City Council in 2010. Petitions were available for signing at Vitamin Plaza, but it is not fully clear what other efforts, if any, were made to collect signatures. Repeated requests for information about signature gathering events or where residents could sign the petition including as recently as last week, were ignored by voice. Per election rules, petitioners needed to submit at least 1,151 verified signatures from Canby residents by 5 p.m. November 29th to initiate a recall. City recorder Melissa Bisset told Now Hear This Canby on Monday that Boyce did not know how many signatures they collected, but she did, quote, let me know that she will not have enough signatures to turn in. I'm not surprised it failed, Bangs said in a later statement to now hear this can be. It is a difficult environment for recalling people, given that voters generally don't appreciate getting second-guessed so close to the original election and also the high number of signatures required. I did not expect the issue to ever make it on the ballot. Bangs said he decided to run for council last year in an effort to, quote, set aside political squabbling and concentrate on nonpartisan issues that improve the community for all residents. A letter claiming to be from Boyce was sent to a number of Canby residents urging them to sign the petitions and protect against Canby erosion, which it defined as a, quote, slow erosion of Canby culture. It also linked to a CanbyFirst.com article recounting a city council meeting in which Bangs, according to the letter, showed contempt for people with religious convictions and two videos in which Spoon, while not operating in official capacity, allegedly exhibited inappropriate behavior. The letter promised signature collection hotspots near your neighborhood, but did not give details. Petitioners were cited at a brief signature gathering event in the Canby Square parking lot near Safeway on Saturday, November 20th, accompanied by a large warning sign reading, quote, Canby Erosion Recall Spot, and another reading caution, Portland values need to stay in Portland. The site appeared to generate little traffic, according to one observer who watched it for about 30 minutes that Saturday and wrapped up before 2 p.m. 
Canby has not seen a successful recall effort of a sitting public official since 1993, when councillors Maureen Miltenberg and Joe Driggers were voted out of office for opposing an anti-gay rights measure that had been passed by 56% of the city's voters. Miltenberg and Driggers had publicly stated that they felt the measure was unconstitutional and unenforceable, and even signed onto a lawsuit brought by the American Civil Liberties Union against the city, which some Cambyites saw as an act of betrayal. Their stance was later vindicated when the legislature passed a new law prohibiting such local ordinances from taking effect, but the debate in Canby boiled on and eventually resulted in the recall of both council members by narrow margins. Canby State Representative Christine Drazen on Wednesday said she would be stepping down from her role as House Republican leader after three years to focus on her recently confirmed gubernatorial campaign. It has been a privilege to serve as Republican leader in the Oregon House during these challenging times, Drazen said in a statement. Today I stepped down from this role to focus my efforts on preparations to serve our state in a new way. Though she did not specify this new undertaking, the apparent allusion was to her bid for the Republican nomination for Oregon governor, which she confirmed last week to various media outlets. While there is a slew of well-known Democrats vying to replace the term-limited Kate Brown, no clear and unassailable frontrunner has yet emerged for the Republicans, and no current GOP candidate has a statewide profile that matches Drazen's. I have enjoyed working alongside my Republican colleagues who have been committed to amplifying the voices of tens of thousands of Oregonians that feel unheard by our current state leadership," Drazen said. The longtime Canby area resident was chosen to lead the House Republican caucus in September of 2019 while still in her first term as an elected official, though she had decades of experience in state politics, including serving as chief of staff for Republican House Speaker Mark Simmons in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Her replacement as leader of the caucus will be another woman and relative newcomer to the legislature, Representative Vicki Brees Iverson of Prineville, who was first appointed to replace Mike McLean in 2019. She easily won re-election in the following year with 73.5% of the vote. Brees Iverson said she was honored to have been picked for the new role and looks forward to continuing her fight for much needed balance in the Oregon legislature. Breeze Iverson, who among the other dozen Oregon Republican lawmakers who signed a December 11th letter urging the state's Democratic Attorney General, Ellen Rosenblum, to join a Texas lawsuit seeking to overturn the presidential election results in four battleground states. Canby's Senate representative at the time, Alan Olson, also endorsed the letter, but Drazen did not. The U.S. Supreme Court tossed the suit for lack of standing later that same day. The Friends of the Canby Public Library is inviting the Canby community to participate in a new event this holiday season, the Canby Christmas Tour of Lights. A modified version of the local nonprofit's pre-COVID Christmas Tour of Homes in which local homeowners invited participants into their residences, this outdoor, socially distanced event will instead invite families to take a self-guided tour of some of the best holiday light displays in Canby. For $10, participants will receive a map and the ability to vote for their favorite displays, with the winning homeowners taking home prizes from Holiday Light Solution, Pudding River Chocolates, and The Book Nook. On the night of the event, December 17th, the route will also feature added goodies and festive fun, including carolers, hot cocoa, snow, and maybe even Saint Nick himself. We are excited to invite our community to join in this fun, festive event that we believe will showcase the small town magic that makes Christmas in Canby so special, said Friends Chairwoman Lois Brooks. We are grateful to our sponsors and members and to all the homeowners who are working hard to make this season bright. 
If you are a homeowner interested in being part of the tour and potentially winning a prize, fill out the friend's brief interest form at surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash canby xmas tour. Tickets are $10 with all proceeds benefiting free educational and cultural programming and materials from Friends of the Canby Public Library. A family may attend the tour with just one ticket, but you will need to purchase multiple ones if you would like each member of the group to have their own vote. Tickets must be purchased at canbychristmastour.com or visit the Friends website and select Christmas Tour from the drop-down menu. Oregon is closer to moving ahead with its new congressional district and new boundaries for five others after a panel of judges ruled Wednesday that work to draw the new boundaries didn't illegally favor Democrats. Most independent analysis has Democrats winning at least four and likely five of the state's six congressional districts. Registered Democrats make up about one third of the state's voters, the largest block in Oregon. Democrats have held four out of five seats in the U.S. House and both U.S. Senate seats. Four Republicans, led by former Secretary of State Bev Clarno, sued to block the congressional redistricting plan, arguing that a potential five-to-one Democratic split didn't reflect the reality of the state. But in their unanimous 14-page opinion, five retired circuit court judges appointed to consider the case determined that the new map was better for Republican candidates than any in the past 30 years. The judges on the special panel, like the Oregon Supreme Court in a separate suit over alleged legislative gerrymandering decided on Monday, wrote that plaintiffs didn't prove that the legislature drew its lines to benefit one political party. Plaintiffs in both cases were unable to force testimony from the Democratic legislatures who drew the maps, who were protected by legislative privilege from being questioned in court. Judges threw out testimony from Representative Daniel Bonham, a Republican from the Dalles, in the congressional case, and Representative Marty Wildey, a Democrat from Eugene, in the legislative case when the two volunteered information about redistricting conversations. The judges said the evidence established that the legislature had logical and nonpartisan reasons to draw the district lines as it did. Judges rejected arguments that splitting the Portland area among four districts and drawing the 5th Congressional District to stretch across the Cascades from Portland to Bend were evidence of gerrymandering. Candidates have already begun campaigning in the newly mapped districts. Democrat U.S. Republicans Suzanne Bonamici, Earl Blumenauer, Peter DeFazio, and Kurt Schrader, as well as Republican Cliff Bentz, were all seeking re-election in their redrawn districts. Schrader faces a primary challenge from the left in Jamie McLeod Skinner, an elected member of the Jefferson County Education Service District Board, who was her party's nominee in the 2nd Congressional District in 2018 and unsuccessfully sought the Democratic nomination for the Secretary of State in 2020. And that'll do it for the news on this episode of Now Hear This Can Be. I'm James Walton. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the rest of the episode and have a great day. And now, a message from Donna Ellison of Ellison Team Homes. Hi, everyone. I wanted to take this moment to invite you personally to come and hang out with us for our end-of-season client event. It's a thank you to all the wonderful people we've done business with, as well as a welcome to a lot of our community. Um, I'm doing this in partnership with Vanessa Zimmerman, Zimmerman Team at Academy Mortgage. It's um, just kind of our way of saying thank you. We've really enjoyed uh, getting to know you, doing business with you, etc. We'll be outside. We're sensitive to the fact that we're in COVID, um, still dealing with that. 
so it will be spread out. People will have room to breathe and sit and walk and talk. Reckless Company, if you've never heard them before, they're awesome. They're going to be playing. Uh, we'll have TMK here. I can't wait to try the corn dog. I've been waiting like two years to try this corn dog. So um, it looks amazing, and I've heard it's amazing, and I think there's quite a following. Also, they'll have all kinds of other food. We'll have beer and cider. Everything's hosted, of course, as a thank you. Again, it's for our clients. It's for our community. We really, really want to come and celebrate. We'll have swag for you, all kinds of fun things for the kids. We hope to see you on 916 from 4 to 8 in the afternoon. And welcome back to the ad sponsor section where I get to talk to people about books because I always drag Megan Waterman in here to be with me. Hi, Megan. Hi. That's, that's not a bad thing. Talking about books is always the best time. I think you know of all people that I can talk about books endlessly. Um, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, Megan, do you want to tell our listeners about what's going on down at the Book Nook? Oh, um, at the Book Nook, we are getting ready for the holidays. Yeah. I know. There's only one I care about. And by the time this ad comes out, it's basically over. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you talking about Halloween? Yeah, I, I like spooky, scary stories. I know you do. We've got a lot of great spooky, scary stories in right now. Yeah, yeah. We do, but spooky, scary stories are also good for Christmas. <gasps> do you have a favorite author that writes spooky, scary stories that are I mean, appropriate for Christmas? You go, you go with your classic Charles Dickens, right? Yep. Some, some uh, Christmas Carol stuff. Absolutely, that's my favorite. That's the best. There's Mr. James. I know about him. He oh, did yeah. a whole series of short, short scary stories for short Christmas. Short scary stories. I don't know. Christmas in general is kind of scary. It depends on <laughs> how many people you have to buy for. <laughs> <laughs> how many people you have to cook dinner for? <laughs> right. Speaking of cooking dinner, Thanksgiving is kept coming up. Thanksgiving is coming. We have got some beautiful cookbooks in recently, and some really cute uh, kids uh, cookbooks just came in. If you want to start cooking with your grandkids or starting to teach uh train up your little ones to cook thanksgiving dinner so you can just sit on the couch and watch football and right now is the time to go in right yes because waiting till christmas eve for that one special book that someone wants isn't going to work out. it's not going to be there this year it's it's no secret the last year and a half has been a little crazy for the whole world and yeah. that is really going to affect christmas this year um there are going to be serious stock issues this year. Um, so get your Christmas shopping done early. We've been working really hard to get as much inventory on our shelves and in um, our overstock as possible so that we um, have what you want at Christmas time. But uh, if you know now a title uh, that you want to buy for somebody for Christmas, get it now. All right. it, it might not be. I might not be able to get it later. And what what is our what is all three of ours? Because we also have Amy in the studio with us. What's all three of ours um, this season's book recommendation? Okay. Amy, what's your <laughs> book recommendation for this season? Uh, the night before Christmas. All right. Yeah, that's classic, Megan. And for me, my favorite Christmas read. Oh. Okay, my favorite book that's coming out this is, it's, it's no secret, I am an Outlander fan. I love Diana Gabaldon. There may be a cardboard cutout of Jamie Fraser in our bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> book boyfriends are a thing. Yeah. Um, and finally, book nine is coming out towards the end of November. So um, you will not see me until I finish reading that. And mine is the Dungeons and Dragons Feast of Legends or whatever, the table... So make sure you guys come on down to Book Nook. Megan, where are you guys located? We are on the corner of Grant and 2nd in downtown Canby. All right. I'm uh, here with a very special guest. I think uh, all of you know him. It is Santa Claus. 
How are you, Santa? I am very fine. Good evening, <laughs> and thank you very much for having me. I see. It looks like you're ready for vacation. We're yes, after Christmas. We so. are ready for a vacation. What, what does Santa do on the off season? You get you get a little bit of playtime before you have to start ramping up. Yes, I do absolutely well, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, nothing. you headed down to Fiji or Hawaii, something like that. Those two. It like, <laughs> depends on it depends on the moods of the reindeer. What? Uh, yeah. How, how long? Because it's their off season too. Yes, their off season, yeah, so yeah. they get to go play. As well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, Santa, you um, you kind of have a reputation as being uh, a jolly sort of fellow. I hope yeah. so. Yeah, I know. I try to be. But does it ever get frustrating, especially nowadays, with all of these parents trying to claim credit for for the gifts that you give? They say, "Oh, they're from them." Mm-hmm. You know, Santa's not real. Does that? How, how do you deal with that? Do you believe in Christmas? <laughs> I do. Okay. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Of course. I'm sitting here talking to you. Okay. Yeah. There is. That's all there is to it. I don't have to deal with the parents because oh, okay. the children know better. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the children know better. Yeah. Yeah. So how are the reindeer? The reindeer are fine. Thank you for asking. Mm-hmm. They're, uh, Mrs. Claus is back there right now making taking sure care of them. taking care of them, making sure the elves are doing the things they have to do before she and I take off on our little jaunt mm-hmm. and a little vacation. vacation. Mm-hmm. They, get the, they get the run of the entire facility while we're gone. So. Oh, okay. The elves do. The elves do. You and ever come back and they mess something up or are they uh, pretty well behaved? They... Well, they're not until about two days before we come back. Okay. Then they become well behaved and very up. organized. They're as organized as they are the it's night like before Christmas. It's like one of those teen movies. They run around. That's they're it. cleaning up with the black they trash have to bags. Do, that's clean up it. The do it all. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sweeping things under the rug, out the <laughs> <Exactly>. windows. <Okay. laughs> They've got the reindeer like hanging out of the uh-huh. second story window. Have you ever been on a podcast before? Or? Uh, no, you know, I haven't. You've obviously done a lot of TV work. Well, it, you career, know, it so. comes with when I get spotted. You know and things sure. of that nature, sure. but never on a podcast before. I've okay. never, I've never been asked any seriously personal questions about the cities that I that I go to and yeah. the people that I see. Yeah. You know, and everybody always wonders. And if I start talking about it sometimes, they think I'm just making this stuff up. Right. But you can't. <laughs> you, Santa Claus can't make anything up no, because he's the honest. things that happens with Santa Claus and yeah. to Santa Claus and because of Santa Claus so are just you, totally amazing. Would you like to be asked personal questions about City City? You go to Canby is probably grown. your favorite city out of all the cities. Canby here. is my favorite yeah. city out yeah. of yeah. all That's of them. That's what I would have guessed. There's no, there's no other city in the world like Canby, Oregon. I I agree with that. I I'm not Santa, but that, I, I would I would guess that that's true. That is very true. <laughs> that is very true. Do you, do you ever get tired, Santa? You've been doing this for a long time. No, no, I never get tired because it is something that I do. Mm. It's something that has to be done. It's kind of who you are at it's, this it's point. It's who I, I am. Mean, it's what I do. I can't. You'd be hard to find another job, probably. I wouldn't want another job. <laughs> Once you're Santa Claus, you, there's nothing else you want job. to be. Okay, it's, fair yeah. enough. Okay, the unemployment would probably be just astronomical. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Benefit. All right, well, we've got another segment uh, coming up here. And uh, parents, if we would ask just for this next part, if you would have the children leave the room, go ahead and have them just go outside and play. Uh, yeah, mm. are, are they gone? Okay. So your real name is Ed Grotsky. Yes, sir. You, it is. How long have you been playing uh, Santa? I, I, somewhere five or six years. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. Uh, how did you get into it? I was asked by a friend of mine if I would fill in and do a couple of Santa gigs uh, for her husband. You were reluctant at first, I understand. I yes, I was. It was. I mean, <laughs> you know, you see. I don't know. I, I was reluctant. I didn't want to be Santa Claus. I, why not? Because I, I don't know why. Mm. But now that I am, yeah, it's a totally entirely different story. Mm-hmm. I, uh, it's something I, I look forward to. Really. And especially here in Canby, the 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 growth that I've been able to see at the light up the uh, tree parade, uh, the parade in the evening, the festivities. Uh, the crowds have just grown over mm. the years. Uh, I've We're also, at that, this year was crazy. It was yeah. very crazy. The line to see you was you know, very it, frustratingly it long. long. <laughs> it's very frustratingly long, and I feel bad when I see people that just oh. give up sometimes. Oh, yeah, that's tough. You know, and so that's why I try to well, we were behind, make it about we, as available as I can. We were behind the firefighters. There was like 40 of them. They just all like crowded around. We're like, come mm. on, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, 
This is for the kid. No, it's, yeah. it, no, no it, it's <laughs> it true. Great. You know, the, the, the children, they wait so patiently yeah. all the time. You mm-hmm. know, I have to uh, interact with them because, you know, they're getting, when all the festivities are going on, such as the, the choir singing and then lighting up the lights and things like that, these kids are getting a little antsy. They don't care about all the lights going on. They're right. looking at the man and they want yeah. to talk to the man. Make yeah. sure the man knows what's going on. Right. right. You know, so you have to interact. You're, you're with them. the star. I guess. For, I for guess. The actually, the kids are the stars. Mm. You know, it, just to, to be able to see them just shine. Well, you were busy this Christmas. I think I personally saw you like three or four times at events, and I think you did quite a bit more than. Yeah, we than were. That. My wife, Mrs. Claus, and I. We were. We were very blessed this year. We. Uh, the amount of engagements that we have uh, had far exceeded anything that I had expected for this year, and I knew there'd be possibly a little bit more than last year. Yeah. But I had no idea that it was going to blossom the way that it did. Yeah, it's it really often, snowballed. It, snowballed's a good word to use. That's yeah. a very good word Thank to you. use. Yes, and uh, if things keep on snowballing like that, <laughs> we can build a snowman. Maybe. You know? <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, the things I've seen, the, the the children that I've seen, I've seen children growing up in this community. Mm. I, I've seen all the good mm. that that Kenby has to offer. You see it all, uh, everything, all the good that it, there is anywhere. The always seems comes out of Christmas time anyway. Christmas. Yeah. But you know. If it weren't for the cold weather, you'd have a hard time distinguishing when was Christmas time and when was it here mm-hmm. in Canby. It's just that type of a community, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, some place that uh, we really enjoy. We enjoy living here. Mm-hmm. We enjoy everything that it has to offer. I mean, mm-hmm. we have the finest group of first responders. Yeah. I think that anybody can lay a claim to yeah. uh, the fire department. Uh, Todd Gary, Jim Davis, and those guys over at the fire department. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. The police department. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys have a tough job. Yeah. You know. Not about the best uh, public access TV station and local news podcast Yes, around. it is. As a matter uh, of fact, you hit that nail right on I've, the head. I've heard that many times. I, I, I've heard I that many no times, personal. too. You, you've told me... <laughs> no, I have no personal opinion <laughs> about okay. either of those things. But um. <laughs> what, what about that other guy? <laughs> uh, I have multiple identities as well, I, like yeah. you do, Ed. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you had a lot of events, and uh, you were talking before we started recording just about uh, the, the way that the kids and the experiences that you've been able to have with them have uh, just just kind of make it all worth it. Not, there are only so many people that know what it's like to be Santa, right? You know, the, that's true. Uh, you know, being Santa Claus, you get to experience. I, I can't really find the right word for it. I think I can just give you the examples of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a, a, a woman over at um, Hope Village that mm-hmm. uh, when I was over there, I was over there for two days. And, uh, and you got to uh, talk to some seniors too. Then. Talk to yeah. this, I mean, children of all ages. Mm-hmm. My, the, the age range of the children I interacted with this year goes from... 18 days, 18 days wow. to 104 years old. Wow. Now that. That's crazy. Wow. That's creepy. That's just beautiful. I yeah. mean, and uh, the moments you get to have Such with people. Such a range, yeah. You know, and uh, with, with, with the seniors, with the larger, uh, the large kids, the big kids, so to speak, uh, you know, the Alzheimer patients, they're... Mm-hmm. They're just wonderfully warm individuals. Mm. I had one experience where I was, I'm very fortunate because when you're over there, they, they're calling out the individuals by name before they would come up to see me. Okay. And so I was able to call them all by name. Yeah. And there was one woman that came up and they put her in, the, and she was in a wheelchair and they had her next to me and I just, she just, she didn't have the... It looked like something was bothering her, something was on her mind. So I I just grabbed her hands and I I said hello to her and how I remember her as a little girl and how she's grown up into such a beautiful woman. And then I asked her, I said, do you remember the last time you sat on my lap? (laughs) And she started to shake her head yes, Mm. and the tears came out of her eyes. Oh my goodness, what a moment. Then the tears came out of my eyes. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, They're just... There are just too many moments. Just the, 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 some of the most wonderful children in the world yeah, tell me, right, right here in Canby. Tell me a moment about the kids. There's an experience you had. You tell me an experience. Oh, they range. I had, 
I, I was doing... Do you, do you get a lot of kids tug on your beard? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I, I had a couple... The pictures I got this year was... Yeah. Uh, I got one picture uh, where the kid just grabbed the beard and he had it there, but then he pulled it. Right. And he pulled it out, and that's the picture I would like to have seen, but they didn't quite get that one. It's somewhere on Facebook. I, was, I you, was sitting... Th it's not as impressive right now. You started growing it, you said, in June or July? Yeah, I, I let it go in about June is when I let it uh -huh. go, the end uh -huh. of May, June. It's pretty impressive, like Christmas time. Well, yeah. It's also uh, hot. Yeah, and then you shave it immediately. <laughs> immediately it shaves <laughs> off, and I just start all over again. Yeah. You know, you, uh, th there was a question you just asked me that I, I was going to elaborate on a little bit, but uh, it escaped me at the moment. Well, ago. Sorry I, I want to hear about maybe like a magical moment or since a, a moment that you had with a kid that, that really has stuck with you. There's a lot of them. Hmm. There is, because there, I mean, you, you can't nail it down to just one particular thing. Yeah. Uh, a variety of things happen. I, uh, a few years back, I, I saw a little girl at the fairgrounds and she was in a wheelchair. Yeah. And she didn't look very happy. She mm -hmm. was just kind of mopey. And I noticed as I'm getting out of the fire truck, the wheels on her wheelchair, they were like rainbow spirals where they turn around. Uh -huh. And I just looked at the, and I said, whoa, look at the wheel, Santa has never seen wheels like that on a wheelchair. And her eyes lit up and yeah. all of a sudden, and she, has my wife's, Mrs. Claus's cell phone number <laughs> because she likes to keep track. She's, mm. a, she's a little girl that has some health issues. Yeah. And, uh, but she's one of them. I had one boy, I was, uh, when I was doing um, the Cuts for Us party uh, a few years back, uh -huh. there was uh, this one boy that was standing right off to my left and he was standing behind me. And I just, every once in a while, I turn around and look at him and I say hi, and I'm talking with the other kids and giving up gifts. And he's just standing there with a big old smile on his face. Mm -hmm. Then pretty soon he goes, hey, hey. I say, yeah, what? He said, do you see the movie Santa Claus? <laughs> I said, yeah, I saw it. He goes, yeah, you were in it. <laughs> you know, things, of course you saw it, yeah. Yeah, things like that, you know I mean? It's That's just uh, the, the things that... Uh, Kids ask for. I, I, mm. I try to. I try to remember how many kids ask me for books. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Even make, still. Even still, I try to make a point of trying to remember the kids that asked for books. Yeah. Because they're just trying to get enough to trade in for an iPad. I think. I think that's what it is. You know? <laughs> and you know, and then with, the with some of these, does trade in some of these kids. I mean, there was this one boy. He, was, he insisted. I believe he was in the fourth grade, if uh -huh. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but he was telling me all about the Apple Watch. That I was going to bring him. Oh. And all the different functions. He's telling you what. And I had no him. idea what this Apple Watch <laughs> can do. Watch <laughs> I'm still finding out things that my iPhone can do, my uh, iPhone 6. So you're just smiling and nodding like, yeah, yes, yeah, sure, you know. Yeah, I, I've I, got it all laid up for you, little Billy. <laughs> it's all there to it, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, when you get asked for. Uh, oh, that's funny because, pet, like, pets. it is always kind of the grandparents that the kids have to explain how to do the technology. Uh -huh. but, yeah, in this scenario. They think you're bringing it to them. So, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they uh, you know, he, he was well versed on the operations of an uh, of an Apple phone. Sure. Too. You know, and they they don't ask for the same things. You get you get the puppies and you mm -hmm. get the horses and the various animals, which of course I can't bring pets because I just don't have room for them on the sleigh. Right. right. And with all those animals, how many potty stops would I have to make? Uh -huh. I never get things done. Yeah. Right now, so yeah. I leave the pets to the parents. Right. You know, and then they're it's not a Santa. Job. People ask me now uh, for iPads, you know, like we said, Apple Watches. Do, do, do you have people that ask, especially, we, we live in a time that's pretty divisive. There's just like mm -hmm. strife and stuff going on. And I know kids, yeah, they're not like following Fox News and stuff like that, but they, oh. that's seeping. Well, maybe they are. <laughs> but I just wonder if you, you start to hear more people, kids asking for peace or World peace. Like that. yeah. That's it, world peace. Yeah. I just want everybody to get along. So, yeah. Some of the ones that I can remember off the top of my that's, head. That's got to be hard, uh, huh? I just, I just wish everybody could get along. Oh, gosh. Oh, that breaks I, your heart, yeah? I want, yes, I, I, I want there to be world peace. I don't want there to be any more hungry people. These are children now. Mm -hmm. These aren't, you know, young, young adolescents. Right. These are kids. Yeah. And yeah. they know the impact of what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, and sure. uh, 
And like I said, uh, the kids, what would you like for Christmas? What do you think I'm going to put under the tree for you this year? Well, it better be books. <laughs> Cute. That, Cute. I know. That, that resonates inside you somehow. You know, yeah. It stays there. Well, I, I have to say, like I said, I saw you at a few events. Um, and, and one reason I really want to talk to you, what stands out to me is that I do get the feeling you really love the kids. And I oh. see that connection. Um, my, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. Uh -huh. And my two-year-old son is a little more stranger danger. He's in that phase. Uh -huh. uh, he saw you twice. He saw you at Gwen's Coffee House mm -hmm. light up the night. Gwen's, he was he was not having it. I had to like sit him next to you. Ooh, and the yeah. picture, he's like he's like staring at the floor, like he's got this like thousand yard stare, like he's being punished. It's literally the face he makes when he's being punished. Oh, like no. he was just not <laughs> having. It. But then by light up the night, that was I think the the next weekend. Yeah. He uh, you 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 talked to him. And you just, you know, he had seen you a couple times at that point, and he, he came right over to you. Oh, yeah. And I've seen you do that with other kids, too. Oh, I just get yeah. that it's very genuine with you, and I appreciate well, that. I, I, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. Uh, Santa it's Claus. Who you are. <laughs> it, maybe, but Santa Claus but it's is Santa Claus, yes. I think that people worry that it's, uh, you know, that, like, who is this? Who is the Santa kid? Cause, because there's that magical, there, there's that magic, there's that connection, yep. and there's, um, unfortunately, like, parents parents have to be aware of mm -hmm. people that might take it take advantage of stuff like that definitely you know yes. and and uh but just like i said it's just it's so real with you and it comes through and that's just you. awesome to, to see you. when you're not necessarily expecting it you know and uh there's only one kind of santa claus hmm. and that's the real santa claus yeah. and you cannot you can't be a partial santa claus one of the hardest things to do and i take a great deal of pride being able to say it is that during that parade, mm -hmm. I make eye contact with every one of those kids. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how I do it, because there are so many of them there, right. but you can look you can look at each one of them, you can tell what's looking at you. Mm -hmm. You know, and you look you have to look at each one of them. You have to acknowledge each one of them somehow. Yeah. I mean Christmas is magic. Mm -hmm. Santa Claus is part of the magic. Yeah. You know, and as long as I can help prolong that happiness and that magic, I will. Mm. Well, this has been really fun. I I've think that, that that's a the great place to end. Just that the uh, Christmas is magic from somebody who somebody who definitely knows. So thank you so much, Ed slash Santa. Okay. Thanks for talking with us. Tyler. My pleasure, sir. Hey, Frankie, what are you doing? Ugh, I'm trying to figure out which TV option I want to use when DirectLink turns off their video services in January of next year. It's so confusing. Do you know there's about 48 million streaming services to choose from? Which devices do they work on? What channels do they offer? Uh, no, I did not know that. But you do realize that you're probably better off than you think. If you have DirectLink's Easy Video TV now, you're already using a streaming service. But, but listen, you don't have to go this alone. DirectLink is actually helping their members transition to their next video provider. The company has an extensive informational website where you can compare popular services and they host live tutorials on streaming TV options to help you decide. Well, hold the phone. Are you saying that they're actively trying to help their members switch to a competing service? Who, who does that? <laughs> well, DirectLink does. I mean, I guess it's one more chapter in their long history of wanting the best for our community. They've actually offered free classes for the past 12 years that teach our neighbors about the latest technology and internet security practices. And don't forget, they also orchestrated that popular bingo game last year oh, yeah. that helped keep everyone entertained and connected during the lockdowns. They've also launched special programs to help keep our students connected at home during the pandemic and partnered with the city of Canby to give free Wi-Fi year round at three local parks for locals and visitors alike. Wait. 
Direct Link does all that? They do indeed. And that's on top of providing the best and most reliable internet and voice services in town. So to learn more about Direct Link services or how they can help you transition to the right video service for your home, visit directlink.coop today. Are you a healthcare hero? Do you want to become one? Are you looking for a position where you are valued, your time is your own, and you have ample opportunity for growth? Marquee Companies at Hope Village in Canby, Oregon offers all of that and more. They are currently hiring nurses, caregivers, CNAs, and enrolling students in their free CNA course. From competitive wages and up to $25,000 tuition reimbursement to flexible schedules and the opportunity to make a positive impact on someone's life, Marquee at Hope Village is the right place for you. Take your career to the next level and apply now to become a valued team member at Marquee at Hope Village in Canby. To learn more or apply today, text CURRENT, that's C-U-R-R-E-N-T, to 888-906-3432. Welcome to the Canby Hall Pass promo series, spotlighting outstanding restaurants and stores in our community. The Hall Pass offers up to $100 in savings and benefits the Canby Educational Foundation. Get yours at the Chamber Office or the Book Nook in downtown Canby, a program of the Clackamas County Business Recovery Center made possible by the Canby Area Chamber of Commerce in Clackamas County. Today on the Hall Pass promo series, we are talking with Shelly and Eric Arndt. Hey guys. Hello, good Hello. morning. They are the owners and founders of the new RO, still still new, right? Yeah, newish. Yeah. <laughs> RO-matic gallery in downtown Canby. Guys, uh, why don't you, for folks that haven't been in here yet, why don't you tell uh, people what you do, what, what you offer here? Uh, we are an art gallery. We offer uh, art supplies as well as classes, and we also offer... 43 different artists for you to view, oh, <laughs> for oh. your viewing pleasure. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, tell us how or, or why, however you want to take it, how or why did you get into this business? Mm. Uh, we really just saw the need for it. Uh, we were out on the coast in Newport and saw all the galleries there and they survived pandemic and wildfires and seasonal traffic and yeah. um, there's so many and, and the great uh, artwork across all different mediums, but they weren't really promoting the artists, and nor were they really keeping it local. They had artists from all over the country. And mm. So what if we saw this amazing local talent in you know, Wayward or different places, part of the showcase, and so what if we uh, you know, opened up a gallery in the Canby area and did it with mostly local and regional artists across all mediums, very talented artists, mm -hmm. And you know, took it and promote them and give them a place to have their work seen, but also bring in uh, some artists that have been around for a while or you know, very experienced artists as well to kind of you know, get it going and have this great diversity of artwork. Bring in some artists that we know from the Midwest and one out of Texas and uh, who are just doing things differently. So the gallery was really one piece of it, but then also the second piece was the education component, and that was something we weren't seeing a lot of. Yeah. You know, really just creating a gallery that we would want to shop at, that we would want to play at and create at a, a, a safe space, if you will, of, you know, that people could come in and um, everyone's welcome here and, you know, have the supplies and tools and education that they would need to whether discover their own inner artists or grow that, you know, existing artistry. Uh, so all of our classes are beginner level, but that was hugely important to us in addition to promoting the local and regional talent, as well as these artists that have a tough time getting into the West Coast market. So, um, and then the third piece being, you know, just a really cool event space where someone could have a private party. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we weren't seeing a lot of that here in town or just offering another neat space in downtown. And uh, it was something that we saw missing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, Shelly, obviously it's been a, a real passion project for you as well. Can you maybe talk a, a little bit more about how and how this uh, came to be? How? Um, <laughs> Eric gave us the why. <laughs> how did it come about? I, you know, honestly, it was February. Yeah. And we, 
yeah, we, we saw the galleries out there and we just, on the way back, we, the drive back from Newport to Canby, we just created the idea. It's, mm. it's amazing. It, it just, yeah, it, it happened so fast. I can't even. <laughs> well, uh, the how is because we had a community that wanted it. Uh, yeah. you know, if we had had, uh, you know, the chamber, sorry, with Kyle Lang at the Chamber of Commerce oh, and yeah. then uh, Calvin and Jamie at the City Business Development and uh, MISO, which is a great uh, nonprofit that helps uh, new businesses out of the county. Just every resource and direction we turned to, they, if it hadn't been for them, it, you know, it probably wouldn't have came to be it. And then local business owners, you know, helping yeah. us when we had our call for artists. That was our first, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what we're doing. And people were talking and sharing it that we'd we never met. We space, please. Yeah, yeah, right. find artists. And yeah. Matt at Wayward was yeah. amazing. And yeah. they, they are still amazing over there, to yeah. be honest. Oh, everyone. Megan and Paul Megan, at the Book Nook. Yeah. Um, They're amazing. Susie at Retro Revival. You know, just... Yeah. These people, it takes a community, and especially you know, to open up something like this that hasn't been here for a while, um, you know, to a town like this, it it took more than just us. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It took more than us. Yeah. Some luck. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, well, good seg to what do you guys attribute your success here? Local businesses, I would think, a lot of cross cross promoting, yeah. cross marketing. Yeah. Um, you know, again, back to the book nook and Megan and Paul they when somebody is in there they always ask have you been to the art gallery and and we do the same you know have you been to the book nook or hey what brings you in or a lot of it's a lot of cross promotion and yeah. um a lot of us local smaller businesses are really yeah. doing it well so <laughs> there's a man at wayward saying hey i want you to put a poster right below our counter so everyone saying the line sees it and i was like what what really he's like yes yeah. i want it you know yeah. tell you guys are on you know good footing i, yeah, I want you really to succeed cool. and, and other businesses allowing us to pass out our flyers that their businesses yeah. have them there as well so it's Sh just shout out to gwen's and um and you know, retro revival and book nook and wayward and siren, siren song. song and yeah. bill and jennifer king at the new king's farm to table they're sending people down here constantly yes um and just and the big also shout out to Matt Nelson, uh, you know, Active Media, also yeah. helping us with the print marketing, and, and yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it that's uh, it they've takes helped a village, us out. <laughs> yeah. um, it, but it, it really does. It's yeah. just amazing how and, this community is yeah. just so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can't explain cool. it. Artists and uh, customers also, you know, spreading the word. Yes. So. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Well, our our next. Standard question is what has been the key to helping you and your business survive the pandemic? Um, you guys opened in June of 2021. Yes. So not being open, I guess, was <laughs> was a help. Uh, yeah. um, but you, you definitely have faced your own uh, interesting time just in the, the few months you've been open. Yes, we did. We opened June 25th. In the midst of. In the midst. Well, the the restrictions were getting a little looser at that time. Oh, I was going to say the heat wave. And uh, yeah, you know, we like, had the record heat wave, yeah. which really slowed the momentum. Yes. <laughs> um, and everybody wanting to be at the coast. And yes. it, it did. It yeah. was, there were some challenges. Or like inside the fridge. Or, yeah. or inside the fridge. <laughs> yeah. This uh, great energy and momentum when we, you know, that week, because the restrictions had just started reducing like right. that Monday. Right. And we, we kind of saw it coming. It, it kind of, everyone kind of knew, okay, the wave, first restriction, re you know, reduction is, is happening. Great, perfect time. We wanted to catch that traffic, that cabin fever of everyone coming out and getting back out again. And uh, yeah, well, it was great. We had all this momentum. Yeah. Thursday was great. Friday was great. And then 115 degrees. He right. Saturday and Sunday melted the downtown and just like Nobody stopped us in our yeah. tracks. And then we the following weekend, we were afraid of the sun. The yes. following <laughs> weekend was 108 and 109 degrees. So we almost had to do a uh, kind of a, another reintroduction yeah. and that was the fourth of july weekend they had a yeah. great turnout downtown and then can be big, big night it was almost like our our open house the second time around yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. Uh, and that was incredible that was and then we and feel we've... like ever since then now it's like oh okay the word is out and people know that yes. we're here but uh, it takes folks in can be a little while to, to see but the re you know now we've been in the same boat as all these all the other businesses and the restrictions were reducing and then they yeah. were back up and right. then they were down and it's like you know, and people are coming in and some, some folks getting a little hostile about, you know, yeah. so we provide masks. We're doing all the things we're supposed to do. And, um, 
but yeah, we're so we're trying to navigate right. it just like everyone else. Right. Any of the other business owners in town send you that like uh, die hard meme where he's like, "Welcome to the party, pal." No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I, so, I think so. That. Yeah, it I might have been. Seen that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. This is my favorite one. This is always a fun one. Um, but what's something that people might not know about you? Could be. Um, hobby that you have or a special skill or maybe an accomplishment that uh, you're proud of for myself uh i was uh i was a sports guy and you know people always think art and sports but uh sports all the way up i actually was a high school hockey official and division one division three cool. hockey official out of minnesota and got a chance to share the ice with That's basically a the deal in minnesota yeah, got a chance to share the ice with a lot of future nhlers uh wow. when they were in high school or college as well as um uh, basically the entire women's olympic team gold yeah. medal team i worked a lot of their games as well and just awesome human beings um met uh, numerous folks that were part of the 1980 olympic team and um so it was, it was that was a little i guess by uh rubbing elbows with folks yeah. that were um, and, and hockey players are the just some of the nicest humans. <laughs> okay, I have to ask, I, I so admire you about that. That's a lot of pressure, right? I mean, do you have to have like an unlisted phone number? Like, do you get death threats at times? Like, oh, <laughs> you're just, your team, you're the third team there. Yeah. You know, so the, as officials, you learn you calm under team, pressure. And as yeah. we said, as we uh, I had a lot of great mentors and they had, one of them we were just talking about the other day. It's a, uh, you know, kill him with kindness. He said, yeah. if a coach is screaming at me, I've got nothing but buttons, bunnies and kittens in my pocket. Yeah. And it's, yeah. that's hard, but once you learn that, you sometimes the more angry they would get, the calmer I would get yeah. and just offset them and kind of bring them back down to my level and learn. However, to answer your question, yeah. yes, there were, I wouldn't say death threats, yeah. but parents, um, lots oh. of angry parents that had to be uh, yeah. taken out from the game. <laughs> yeah, there, it was insane. And, and Minnesota hockey is, you know, like football yeah. in Texas, it's, uh, they get yeah. very excited yeah. about it. Yeah. We would see police called to a 10 year old toilet bowl game on a Sunday morning, I'd show up at 8 a.m. to the rink and the police were already there escorting out a parent who was making death threats to an official. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I can, it was, uh, it, which was just absurd. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but no, it was a really fun journey and uh, I hung up my skates a few years ago, but I actually um, did bring out my gear and I may look to get back into like a grassroots level and helping develop officials out here. And nice. I've connected with some of the folks out here, but uh, something cool. that some people don't know about me because Hockey is not really nearly as big. You, you don't here. walk in here and you think, I bet, I bet the guy who does this it was into hockey. <laughs> <laughs> right. I bet he was really into hockey. <laughs> also really into woodwork and photography. Yeah. yeah. So if you yeah. all have varied interests, we think that's a good thing. How yeah. about Shelly? What, what's yours? Probably no surprise. I actually am an art, not a professional artist, but I am an artist. Yeah. I do paint and uh, whimsical, and I'm working on my door right now. Um, oh, that is lovely. The different scenes from the yeah. Alice in Wonderland that story. That's so cool. Um, so, yeah, some people, I, I'm assuming, I don't know, I, when people come in here, they're, the question is, are you guys artists? Yeah. We are, in our own right, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess it, it probably wouldn't surprise many people to find that out, but I do not sell my work in here. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I intend to. Yeah. I, I'm just not at that level yet. Yeah. Um, the gnomes are also mine. Um, so, again, I just... I don't know, something is a hobby of mine. Oh. I've been doing it since I was, I don't know, young, really young, been yeah. drawing since I was, I've been probably like five or six. Yeah. Shelly also has a phenomenal understanding of the breathalyzer machines <laughs> and the science behind it because she oh. worked for some of the top DWI attorneys in the country who oh, uh, were okay. kind of scientist attorneys. So she, I guess that is something people to, may not know about She got me. to understand the, the legal system very well as well as... Um, DWI laws. Wow. And, I worked uh, in the legal field for 21 years, and okay. of those, a ten of them worked in criminal defense. Yeah, yeah. So and, a lot of uh, people may not know that about uh, me. But still, maybe I'm not too surprised that you needed an escape at times. From <laughs> yeah, you know, I um, <laughs> just played Alice in Wonderland for a while. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit out here and de-stress. Just draw. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it that is a drastic career change too. Yeah. Uh, going from criminal defense or legal to owning your own art gallery. And, Again, some people have asked why. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and 
I say because of the stress. Yes. No. <laughs> if you had done it, you would know. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> you would and if you would run an office of attorneys, you would know. And there are people so, out there listening to this going, shaking their head going, yes, yes, yes that yes, is exactly should, right. We just met with a prospective artist who was a, she was a Portland police officer and detective for 20 years. Oh, so, right. I mean, you just, people, anyone has an artist inside them. It's just, you know, whether we try to help them coax that out. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's a great way to uh, leave it. Thank you guys so much. It was such a delight to talk to you again. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Breaking. Thanks, Tyler. Also joining us on the Canby Hall Pass promotional series today is Susie Joy of Retro Revival. Hi, Susie. Hello. How are you? Busy. Busy as ever. <laughs> um, absolutely, which is good. Busy it is, is good. good. Yeah. Um, so we've got a few questions to ask you. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So the first one is uh, tell us uh, what people can find at Retro Revival. Currently, we are filled with vintage Christmas, the most I have ever had. Really? And definitely. Decorations, Decorations, gifts. gifts. Anything that's vintage Christmas, wow. I have it. it it's does crazy. It look amazing in here. Thank you. Ornaments. Lots of ornaments. Lots of ornaments, yeah. lots of blow molds, lots of ceramic Christmas trees, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Just, I had a good year finding things. Yes, yes. <laughs> Getting some very... Um, yeah, Clark Griswold vibes from some of the, like some of the classic <laughs> Christmas movies from the retro era. Yeah, um, but no leg this, lamps, sorry. No leg lamps. Well, those, those probably were the first to sell, I'm sure. Oh, I haven't found one yet. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be fun to get, get some of that stuff, though, right? I love it. Yeah. I yeah, love it. To, to it, uh, see that come through the door and then out the door, right? Oh, yeah. it tickles me that I have all these things that I grew up with and yeah. other people did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so my next question, I've heard this story before, but maybe some of the listeners haven't. Always fascinating to ask folks, how and why did you get into the business here? And how did you get into this game? I fell into it accidentally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, I was just kind of hanging with a friend. She was selling stuff out of a shop. I decided, oh, that sounds kind of fun. I'll do it with her. And then the shop we were yeah, in. Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, the shop we were selling out of um, went up for sale mm -hmm. and we bought it. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> another one went up for sale and I bought that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's how I ended up with this one. My friend took the other one, I got this one, and here I am. You decided to give it a try and you just never stopped. <laughs> 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 kind of. It's kind of yeah. how I run my life. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you started in Oregon City, so we're yes. so, so glad you found your way here to Canby. Yeah. And have been uh, such a keystone Thank in our you. Canby downtown as things have, you know, started to grow over the years. You, you've been here back when you were one of the first. Uh, <laughs> I have been in awesome. Canby seven and a half years, and I've yeah. been, had the shop, um, Nine, and then I had the other one about a year before that one. So has there ever 10 been years. a business that has lasted as long as in this location, right? It was like a revolving door for a, for long, a long time. time. It yeah. was a revolving door. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this I don't corner know. of it's uh, the longest job I've ever held. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's one way to define it. I did um, raise my kids and all that, so I guess I can't. Yeah. <laughs> say well, that. that actually segs into our next question, which is: To what do you attribute your success? Oh, um. Enjoying what I do yeah. and my family and friends saying you can do it. Yeah. And it'll be worth it. Yeah. And they were right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Quick, very succinct <laughs> answer. Usually that's a little more detailed. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that like tattooed somewhere, probably. Um, well, I don't know if you heard, we definitely did do an interview about this a few months ago or anything like that, but there was this uh, pandemic that yes. happened that has ah. affected, happened to affect <laughs> retail stores quite a bit. Um, no, I'm kidding, of course. Um, you know, kind of segueing off of that last question as well. But uh, what do you think have been the keys to help your business um, survive that time <laughs> and uh, continue to recover in the wake of it? Um, definitely being able to be willing to change on a dime. So yeah, a lot of adaptability. Adaptability yeah. saved us. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So yeah, we yeah. What are some of the things you did? You did like. Um, well, we did like everybody else and shopping. spend a month going, what, what the heck do we do now? <laughs> what is going on? 
then after that, and then after that, period, <laughs> you one thing you did was you made use of these enormous windows. Yeah, and sort and of made we, that the store. And it was that like was the a store. store. We moved everything faced out. Yeah. Which we marketed ourselves. Come and shop in the windows. Give us a call. Call from your car. Whatever. Right. right. And window shopping used to mean something different. <laughs> I know, just right? Looking, but now that's actually how you shop for a little while. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes Bible. we still have people doing that. Yeah. And um, we'll see something and call you. The, or, yeah. Yeah. Hitting the social media like crazy, which yeah. everyone was on already. So that right. was a big help. Right. And then um, ramping up selling online. So we have an eBay store and an OfferUp store and a Macari store and an Etsy store. And hmm. we post, you know, things for sale on all those places yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Awesome. And that's worked out well. And that was already in that in my business plan to do that. Right. But. You know, that yeah. just gave us the time to really focus and figure out what we're doing and yeah. ramp it up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, well, the last question yeah. is my favorite one because I get to put you on the spot. <laughs> Tell me something that um, people may not know about you. It could be uh, a, a special skill that you have <laughs> or a hobby that you do or maybe uh, an achievement that you're proud of. I am actually... a computer programmer really <laughs> really wow like for and i what and what oh well i capacity? haven't done it for years upon okay. years now but yeah i started out i have a degree in computer science wow. and i've been playing on computers since oh late 70s <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny and then for your and antique then, business you chose to go <laughs> to a time school. when there were no no such thing that's so funny yeah, yeah. or maybe there were computers but they were the size of like oh they've building. been around for quite a <laughs> right <laughs> it, i have to say that i hit the era with the computer stuff where they went from computers the size of my shop right <laughs> to very heavy portable computers right. in the span of four years yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. my fr as a freshman, they were that, and then by the end you had, you know, those big. Well, I'm trying to think of the brands, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's funny though. So even yeah. even back then there was like, you it know, was fast, cha fast changing, changing and growing. Changing is fast. Yep. Started yeah. out typing cards and where you sent them off, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then the computer spit them back at you and said you screwed up. And, and, and I just <laughs> didn't end up being a good fit, or what happened there? Oh no, I. Did it for a while? I, and just, no, I yeah. was in the high tech industry for a while. Did yeah. startups mostly, and it was really fun. And yeah. that's an adrenaline rush to do that. And yeah. then uh, ended up raising kids. Yeah. yeah. And that was Absolutely. <laughs> different kind of rush, right? <laughs> this is a totally different <laughs> rush. <laughs> oh, I missed my coding date. No, <laughs> Codes are so much easier to understand than children. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Susie, thank you so much for taking time out to talk yeah, to us today. Thank you. Tyler, did you know that the Australian lyrebird can mimic any sound that it hears? Even chainsaws? No, that's uh, super interesting. Did you know that a baby puffin is called a puffling? Uh, or no. that baby sea otters can't swim, so their moms wrap them up in pieces of kelp until they learn how to paddle? Wait, do you know any trivia that isn't, like, animal-related? Not really, but here's some stuff you may not know about the Wild Hare Saloon, where Camby goes to eat and have fun. Okay. The Wild Hare is one of Camby's longest-running, locally-owned restaurants. Owners Joan and Darren Moden have been in business for 16 years. That's cool. Yep. Heck, you were just a baby back then. I, and, wait, what? And they love to give back. They've been members of the Camby Chamber for that long, and they donate over $20,000 to local sports, FFA programs, and civic organizations each year. Year. Wow, I'm legitimately like caught off. That's cool. Yeah. They also support more than 30 jobs in the community through their award-winning staff, some of them as young as 18. Hey, that's older than you are. N uh, dude, I'm... I'm 10 months younger than you. With, with the days getting longer and the weather getting warmer, the Canby Wild Hair's expansive outdoor patio is the place to be. Furry friends, welcome. Well, that sounds great. I'm going to go check them out just off of Highway 99E next to the Space Age in Canby at 1656 Beaver Creek Road in Oregon City or on their website at thewildhairsaloon.net. 
Now Hear This Can Be is produced by me, Tyler Clausen. Our content director and star reporter is Tyler Frankie. And of course, our show is edited by Cameron Clausen. We also feature the vocal talents of Joy Struby and James Walden. So a round of applause to them. The song that you're hearing right now is Can Be by singer-songwriter Olivia Harms, used with her permission. To find more work from her, you can visit her website, olivia13.com. Now Hear This Can Be is dedicated to preserving independent local journalism and redefining local news with our fun, fresh, and energetic brand of storytelling. Our sincere thanks to our local sponsors who make this show possible. Please show your appreciation by supporting the small businesses who support us. The production of Now Hear This Studios, Canby's locally owned, full-service audio, video, and media production company. Our mission is to produce the best content in the universe, and we'd love to help you do it. Find us online at nhtstudios.com. Um, I will take a motion to adjourn. I just moved it. I didn't even ask for it, though. (laughs)